Now, women leadership is a conversation tonight. And speaking of which, from a lecturer to a governor, Dr. Joyce Laboso has quit, uh, or rather has had quite the professional journey. A day after she made history becoming the first woman governor of Bomet, she sat down with Victoria Rubadiri to recount the journey thus far and share her grand plans for her home county. Madam Governor, how does it feel to make history, not just once, but now a second time, of course, in the county of Bomet? Well, quite, uh, I think I've not yet quite got used to it, you know, it's, um, uh, well, it's a, a pleasant surprise and I'm happy that, um, you know, these people of Bomet have given me this honor to be the, um, their governor. So I'm still getting used to it. I'm yeah. not quite, uh, quite used to it yet, but um, we've started, we want to start work uh, right away and uh, get on with the business that they, they wanted me to get on with. You had a rather unceremonious entry into politics. Did you ever see it turn out this way? Initially, I didn't think I was going very far in politics. But as I said, once I'd gotten in, I, I realized I could do this thing. And, uh, and, you know, and every time I keep surprising myself, you know, even more. Uh, when I started on the governor one, it was also like, I try, oh yeah, why not? I've been in this thing for 10 years. Yeah. Why don't I try something else? I also have that itch. Every 10 years, I somehow have to try something different. And, and politics is not easy. You got a lot of opposition just off of the fact that you were a woman. Uh, some also castigated you for marrying someone who was not within your community and, and told you to vie in another county, for instance. Just getting past a lot of that opposition and a lot of that rhetoric, what did you do? Um, I think for me, and I would really advise a lot of people, you know, there's a lot of propaganda and a lot of, you know, trying to bring you down in politics. And, and I think um, you must counter that, but with, um, with, with facts mm. so that, and, and, and diffuse the focus on marriage, for example, diffuse the focus on my being a woman and talk more and go a notch higher and keep talking about the failures of the person who is on the seat vis-a-vis -vis my manifesto and what I'm standing for. I realized, wow, this seat really meant so much for so many people and particularly women. The number of women leaders across the country that came to witness my, my swearing in really told me a lot. And, 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 and really, I want to tell you that um, um, it has put even an extra burden on me to perform. Because really, if these people are so excited, all these women across Kenya, and who came personally, with Siolo, I don't know, you, you know, Turkana, wherever, you know, central province, all literally here. and. All of them to say, you know, thank you, you've done it for us. We have now broken the glass ceiling. You have helped us. We can also now, you know, um, move in as, uh, as women and get the courage to, to do what you have done. And speaking of which, what are your plans? You had a seven-point manifesto yes. uh, for the county of Bomet. Yeah, I um, want to really see if I can change the lives of women, really. So water is going to be key you know across this county everybody was saying you know save us from this perpetual going to the river and you know and going for long distances and there's no water and you know just so water is going to be key um also you know use the different ways of trying to see how to improve the economic um you know uh, ability of each of the all of the families it is we are yes it's an agricultural area um we've had a very serious uh, problem with the with maize growing you know for about four or five years we've not really had any good crop on so it's what to do that can be able to change their lives using the what they have the potential that we have in this so it is tea it's doing things around tea that can improve what remains with the farmer your late sister Lona is not with us anymore but what do you think she would have said if she saw you today Actually, the, the Bible that I used to, um, to, to be sworn in, I, I, I used her Bible, the Bible that she had, um, she had used, because all along um, I have uh, 
come, I came into politics really through her. First of all, by working with her when she was um, a, a politician herself. So all, all along, people have always said, you are, you know, you've always been in the shadow of your sister. Um, I think I have come a long way. I've come out of her shadow. I have uh, been able to uh, make something of myself. And I think she would really have been proud to see that that, you know, her sister whom for years she thought was just an academician who was really looking to be professor and other things has gone and, and you know, even probably done better than she would have done if she was, uh, you know, if, we go, you know, she, she had been alive. So I know she would have been uh, proud and so would my mother who is really the backbone of uh, why we are all in, in, in politics. She was like the first woman and I don't know, counselor, and you, she was doing all manner of things that many women would not have thought. So is Madam President in sight at any point? And why not? <laughs> you know, um, let's do this governorship and do it properly, and I'm sure Kenyans can see how I've performed, and maybe, you never know. I always say my destiny is in the hands of God. He is the Almighty, and He decides. And if after 10 years, yes, um, why not? Yeah. It's uh, always in the radar somewhere, you know, but we'll we leave watching. it all to God. Great. Yes. Thank you so much, <laughs> Madam Governor.